Hi guys, my name's Tony Gray and welcome to week number two of these weekly lessons. Thanks for all of your feedback and comments on week number one. Please continue that for this week and we'll just keep the momentum going and we'll just kind of create a little community where we can keep growing and pushing ourselves forward. So this week I'm going to tackle an odd time signature kind of groove concept and it's based on a, a tune that I recorded and played a lot with with Hiromi. It was her arrangement of softly as in the morning sunrise where she kind of created this 7-4 groove that was based around two chords and I was in a situation where I, I would have to kind of play this while her and Dave Fuzinski were like soloing and going crazy over and the drummer Martin Valihora was definitely um, pushing the boundaries and really kind of interacting with a soloist but I as the bass player had the responsibility of really being the anchor really no matter what was thrown out at me and, and trust me when you're playing with creative musicians like Hiromi and Dave Fuzinski and Martin Valihora like 7-4 can be the most challenging thing because nobody's really marking the one it's just kind of a lot of interaction and a lot of movement going on and a lot of energy and what they were relying on me in that situation was to remain really strong so they could use me as the anchor where they could really kind of go at each other and and not be um pulled all over the place by me you know they could kind of rely on me as the as the safety net if you like and that's a really challenging thing to do when everyone's throwing all of these polyrhythms at you and it's really easy to kind of trick yourself to to start to hear one where where it really isn't so i would have to kind of develop this kind of discipline where i would always kind of have the the fundamental groove like embedded in my mind and i just want to share with you in this lesson some techniques that i used to really help me kind of make myself more solid and more reliable in this kind of situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a demonstration first where I'm just going to kind of play freely, just changing up the harmony a little bit with the bass lines or the, the route uh, that I choose to play. Just I'm just going to kind of go in all directions. I'm going to try to pull away from the obvious 7-4 to really being solid, to not playing the downbeats, to changing the, the, the chord functionality and then after the demonstration, I'm going to break down some ideas and some tips for you to kind of start implementing this stuff in your own way.
here they're an example that the bass line kind of went everywhere. And in a real situation when I'm playing with other musicians, I probably wouldn't be so busy. But because I'm playing with a sequence and nobody's really interacting with me, then I'm kind of using that opportunity to really kind of push the boundaries of where you can go with this. So you can kind of prepare yourself for the unknown, if you like, um, when, you, when you're on stage with other musicians. And, you know, the, the fun thing about playing jazz or improvised music is you can really push yourself to your limit. You know, there's anything is possible, really. And as long as you have control of the anchor, like the real fundamental point of the groove, and you understand the harmony of what's going on, you can really interact melodically, you can interact rhythmically, you can really go anywhere you want to go. You know, as long as you understand the core groove or the core point of what you're doing, then if that's all always embedded in your mind, you can kind of go anywhere and always be aware that you can bring it back and know exactly where you are when you do bring it back. And again, the beauty of playing with musicians like Hiromi or David Fujinski or Martin Valahora, the drummer, is them guys are going to really push you to your limits. You know, they're going to take you everywhere harmonically. They're going to take you everywhere rhythmically. You're going to be fooled into hearing the one in different places. You're going to be fooled into hearing the harmony differently. So it's really kind of up to you to be so confident in what you're doing and so grounded in what you're doing that you can kind of pick and choose what you, where you dictate it, you know, because as a bass player, we're really dictating the foundation of the harmony. And, you know, it can you, you have to be quite brave sometimes to really step outside that to change the tonality and just make sure that you're not like forcing people to go in the direction you're going in, but just kind of supporting the direction that they're going and enhancing it and just really kind of, bringing some cool colors out so that's what i was trying to demonstrate in the performance i've just done and i'm now going to break down some of those concept that are, concepts that i was using so you can apply them to your own practicing situation so the first thing you want to do is really understand where these chords lie within the rhythm you know it's a seven four groove there are two chords pretty much to deal with so the first thing it's important to do is understand where those subdivisions are because that is really what the tune is you know so you don't want to really stray too far away from that and if you do then you want to know exactly where it is just so you, it doesn't end up being something completely different it's cool to go on these little musical journeys but you've got to stay true to what you're doing and just find creative ways of making it interesting but also keep the listener involved in, in what you're doing and take them on the journey with you. So like I said, the first thing you want to do is understand where these subdivisions are within the 7-4 groove. And in this case, there's two chords, a C minor 7 and an A flat major 7. Now the C minor 7 is going to last four and a half beats and, this, and the A flat major 7 is going to last two and a half beats. So the first thing I want to do is understand where those chords happen within the 7-4. So if I'm clapping my hand here, 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, 5 and 6 and 7 and... So the C, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5, it happens on the and of 4, we then change to the A flat. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 6 and 7 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 Okay, now there was a little bit more to that groove. I just basically added a note in between the chords that was the G that's basically setting up the A flat and it's also the fifth of C. So it's a perfect kind of chord to pivot in between. And that landed on beat 3 and beat six and a half so it's one and two and three and four and five six and seven and one and two and three and four and five six and seven and one. so the first thing i wanted to do is really make sure that i had that ingrained in my playing so let's hear that along with the drum groove Thank you. 
what I'm going to do is make a drum track available for you to download along with a document and along with the um, more interesting track that I've I used on the performance so you guys can practice along with this these different ideas. So the first thing you want to do is have that pattern locked into your mind so wherever you go, even if you leave spaces, gaps, don't play all the downbeats, go on your little journeys, you always have that pattern locked inside your mind. Okay, so I'm going to play the drum groove now and the concept of what I'm doing here is I'm only going to focus on approaching the C minor 7. I'm going to forget the A flat major 7 for now, although the pattern is always going to be in my mind, you know, the... All I'm going to do is focus on approaching the C. Now you can do this with chord tones, chromatic notes, octaves, you know, and again, always have the whole pattern in your mind, but just focus on approaching that downbeat. So let's hear the groove. Six, seven, one, two, three, four. So once you're comfortable with that, I now want you to look at doing the same thing only for the A flat major seven. Now again, you can use chord tones, approach notes, chromatics, whatever you want to do. Just make sure that you hit that A flat on the and of four. Now it's a really good discipline. This I want you to keep this the the C or the pattern in your head, but again, just only focus on approaching that A flat. So here's the groove. Four, five, six. Okay, once you're comfortable with that, now try to do the same thing with the A flat and the C. So you're going to approach the C in any way you want to do with chord tones, chromatics, whatever you want to do. And again, do your fills into the A flat. Now this is quite busy and it's not something you would necessarily do live, but it's good to have that control if you want to draw from it. So again, we're just going to focus on approaches to the downbeat and we're going to try to focus on approaches to the A flat, which is on uh, four and a half. Okay, here we go. Here's the groove. Okay, so the next concept I want you to work on is not always playing the downbeat. Now we're going to look at both chords here, the C minor 7 and the A flat major 7. Again, we're going to have this pattern embedded into our heads. But we're going to focus this time on not always having to play the downbeat, but still remaining solid and giving ourselves that feeling of the anchor. Here's the groove.
So finally, we're going to look at the harmony a little bit. We're going to look at these two chords and where they're coming from. You know, the C minor 7 and the A flat major 7. Now we can think of one scale as a tonality here, and it's basically coming from the C minor modes here. So it's like a C Aeolian. So it's like a 1 minor 7, which takes can take the Aeolian scale, and then it's the A flat major 7, which is really the... In minor modes, it's the uh, flat 6 major 7, and we can think of like the Lydian chord scale for this. So really, if we're thinking of major modes and it's major mode tonality, it's basically in the key of E flat major. So what I want to do now is just explain that you don't always have to play the root of the chord for it to sound good. You know, this is where the monotony of a bass player, we can learn how to understand harmony where we can kind of take the chords and put them in a different light just to kind of create a different color. Now, it's not good to be too playful, but sometimes if the soloist or the melody is kind of pulling you in that direction and you use your ears, then you can just kind of enhance things and just kind of create a, a different way of hearing it just because, you know. It's just one of them moment things where you make a choice and the more you know, the more you can choose from. And as long as you remain mature and respectful to the music, then you can just really enhance it and kind of take it in a, in a cooler place. So if you look at a C minor 7, okay, I've got a C here in the bass, an E flat, a C and a B flat, uh, sorry, an E flat, a G and a B flat. Now a keyboard player or a guitar player would not necessarily be playing the root in their left hand. They would just be focusing on coloring it with their right hand. So you might add like a tension 9 on top of this. So we're kind of pretty much left with an E major 7, an E flat, G, B flat, and D. Now on the bass, that opens us up to a lot of different possibilities. So for example, if I played an A flat over this, it gives it that Lydian sound, that A flat Lydian sound. And that's over the C minor 7 chord. We can also play an F here. It gives us like that F minor 9 sound. In the, in the progression, I kind of went... I just played the of the um, E flat, which give it like that lush E flat major sound. You can even have a tension F in there, which is 11 on the C minor chord. See, just with that one chord, I'm like E flat major, B flat major, A flat major, F minor. Okay, so again, you know, don't restrict yourself. Think outside the box. Look at all the possibilities. This is the place to do it in your practice room. Just make things really creative and cool. Push yourself, push your ears. Just kind of be aware of what you're doing. Just break things down systematically and just learn how to be creative with it and control it. And then when you go to play with musicians, you know, remember to stay focused and mature. Let the music guide you. Don't impose yourself and force things that aren't going to happen naturally because it should be just a, a, a communal focus for the greater purpose. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. And again, there's a document for you to download. There's an MP3, MP3s for you to download. Please send in your comments and feedback. I want you to post your own videos using these uh, MP3s that I've uploaded. Have fun. Give me suggestions for some new lessons. Sign our mailing list. TonyGreatBasicAcademy.com and we'll see you in week number three.